Okay, we're good. Just went? Okay, great. That was really anticlimactic. I was expecting that. <laughs> anyway, Jake, uh, thanks so much for joining us this morning or afternoon. Um, do you want to give a little introduction and tell us about Southeast Angels? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, I caught the last few minutes of last session. It, it sounded super interesting. And um, so, yeah, excited to be here. Um, yeah, so we're Southeast Angels. We're a, we're a Brighton-based angel investment network. Um, we've been around for sort of the last three years and invest in pre-seed and seed stage companies. Um, we don't invest in a particular sector. We, we, we're kind of a bit of a broad mix of, of the things that we're interested in. We've got a quite a diverse set of backgrounds in our angel network and invest in businesses that we where we find the founders really compelling. Um, my role is head of startup relations. I basically run our deal flow, kind of the gatekeeper for a lot of pictures. So I hear a lot of startup pictures and we're currently invested in a business about every two months. So we've got quite quite an active network at the moment. Um, so yeah, excited to be here. Great. Um, so talk to us about, um, I know you said you pre-seed and seed stage, um, but what are the specific things that you're looking for um, in a startup? Or like what would, if you're just getting cold outreach, um, mm. what are the things that would make you want to have that first meeting with the founder? Yeah, sure. Um, just to start off with, we, uh, like kind of cold outreach is something we not prioritize, but we we almost make everyone send go through kind of cold outreach just to try and make it as fair as possible. So we don't really do a lot of warm intro stuff. We basically just say, look, send us a pitch tech through the site and we will look at it and we will get back to you. So that's kind of the first level of that. Um, I think the first um, instance is ultimately your pitch deck, when you send it through, especially cold, is you're only trying to create intrigue. You're not trying to explain absolutely everything. Um, so, you know, if maximum three points per slide and, and, and getting across a, com um, a, a compelling value proposition and, and, and show that you're really solving a problem. And um, I think it helps if you've got industry experience in the team to, to, to highlight that and almost make a point of bragging about it, bragging about it a little bit. I think investors do really look for founder experience. And if you have been in that industry for years, you, you will know what those problems are. So get that across. And um, those kind of critical two points I, again it's not really about explaining absolutely everything in 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 you can't do that in 10 slides and um, ultimately all you're trying to do is get us to a conversation and um, there is some aspects where unfortunately there's just areas certain sectors we just don't invest in so we will kind of decline quite quickly if it's sort of more traditional businesses and um, that are kind of their differentiator is led more on brand than anything else. We tend to invest more in uh, businesses that have a technology advantage uh, that could own a segment. Um, if you can explain how you could, might be able to own a segment, then uh, that's going to put you in good stead for a conversation. And what's your typical process after you get through the first meeting and you're interested? What happens What happens then? Yeah, sure. Um, so called application to begin with, that's basically just sending your deck, send deck through the site. Um, then we'll arrange a 30 minute discovery call. Um, sometimes it can last a little, a little bit longer, but that's that's with myself or a colleague. Um, but I, there we're just trying to just get into a bit more detail about what 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 is your business here. Um, we speak to about uh, what, 40 to 50 companies a month. Um, and then we select four a month to pitch to our group. We do run a pick screening with our group every month. So it's sort of the top 10% that we pick for our group based on what we think they're interested in, which is a broad mix. So we do have a wide variety every single month. When we pitch to the when you pitch to the group, it's a, a 10 minute pitch with 15 minutes of questions, usually on Zoom. Um, and then if investors are interested, they'll then do a follow up kind of a longer one hour conversation, which is less structured and more just about getting into the granular aspects of the business. At that point, they usually know if they're investing or not. Um, and then we could typically close a deal in uh, around two weeks. Um, just for people that are <clears throat> checking us out, we, we we get involved fairly early stage. Investors come in on sort of 25K to 50K tickets. And um, so an average raise of us might be around 100 to 200K with four or five members kind of getting involved on any one deal. Um, and it's a monthly rolling basis of applications. So we don't do, you're not waiting months for to, to pitch. We can get you involved quite quickly but obviously keep in mind that um you often only get you really only get one shot so time your application um when you reach a, a particular milestone for where you are and what are the things that come up during that process that um 
are like red flags to you other than, you know, a founder who's, who's lying about something and that comes to light. What are like the non-obvious red flags that you see? Um, I think founders are trying to do a bit of a just kind of spray and pray about everything that, that everyone they're talking to and every opportunity that might be coming their way. I think sometimes um, in early stage, it feels like you have to prove a lot, um, which you do in, a, in, in sort of a quite a narrow area. But in terms of, oh, well, we're talking to this company and that might be a thing. And then in two years, they want to, they want, they're, they're interested in this product feature set. So we might be doing this. And, and we're also in conversations here. And there could be a lot of, um, conversations that are not tangible that that, that founders are, want to talk about and, and say everything that they're involved in when really what we're looking for is have you figured out a value proposition that's compelling and are you making progress in convincing people to tap into that proposition that's really the the core thing we're looking for to begin with a, a, a product roadmap can look incredibly um you know why you can cover a lot of different services later down the line in the early stages really we, we, we're looking to see that could, have you built a product that's valuable and are people engaging with it um so you you don't need to talk about random conversations that are not that are not tangible and um, if they are making progress that, that that is good but um the more focused founders do do better with us um especially in those early conversations Got it. And and how much importance do you put on like financial forecasts? We hear a lot of mixed feedback. Some investors really heavily value it. Others don't. Um, where do you sit and where do a lot of the angels in the group sit on that? In initial conversations, we 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 just want to we just want to get to know the business. I think at the point that when they're investing, they they will want to have a check through financial forecast. I think that we would expect to check through a forecast at, at every investment mainly to see if the forecast matches the story that you've put together when you've pitched the business. Um, and that story could look like a lot of different things. Not every business is aiming to be profitable within three years or five years. Um, other businesses take a huge amount of time to get to market. So maybe they just look like a super delayed forecast where you're building a product for three years because it's incredibly complex. The main thing is that you, we can see financially that your story stacks up. Um, it's easy to put together a story in a pitch deck, but what do the numbers say? And um, as long as it matches up, then then that's okay. It's oh, it's okay for startups to have different financial stories moving forward, as long as it's working towards the goals that you said you want to work towards. If that's a seed round in a year's time, and we look at the numbers and we go, well, you're not making enough money to to maybe convince that uh, investor to do that seed round, then we'd we'd want to see that forecast start to tweak, and um, and just work towards the goals that you've set. Got it. And are you looking for like the cash flow um, balance sheet and like income statement on the financial models, or are you just looking at at one of those? I mean, some of our angels have a financial background, so that they, they do like to, they do like to look at that. But the, the the core thing is 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 the financial sort of story. Um, if you've got balance sheets and and, and that that's okay. And um, but it's not the core. Um, it's not the core material. Really, it's the plan it's the okay cool what does this business look like in a year's time where are you operationally where are you commercially um where are you with funding um and just and kind of just plotting that future um so a two-year at least financial forecast is, is, is a good start that makes sense um we're going to move to pitches really shortly um and just due to timing i'm going to change up the order a little bit so uh, mark will have you go first and malcolm Deliana, Jolie, we'll still be able to fit everyone in. Um, but Mark, be ready to go in a few minutes. Um, okay, so in terms of um, the pitch, what can a founder do to really stand out other than having like amazing traction? We just had the session before where the speaker was talking about the importance of narr narrative and storytelling um, and also really personalizing the pitch to the investors. But when you're pitching a group of angels, it's hard to do this, build the same kind of profile that you can if you were, um, you know, pitching just one person. And so what are the ways that you have found investors have, or sorry, founders have really captured um, investors' interests apart from just like the traction and state of the overall startup? Yeah, um, obviously traction does speak for itself, but I think there's this there's, there's, there's smart traction earlier on, early on, which isn't which is the best founders that approach is early stage and perhaps it's their first first round. They don't have tons of volume, but what they are 
kind of hell bent on proving is the the strength of their engagement from customers. So let's say, okay, so you don't have a thousand customers and, and, and above, you've got a couple hundred or maybe maybe even less than that, but they're proven that those few customers absolutely love them. So they haven't made tons of revenue. That's fine. Uh, they've only just launched their product. They've got tons more to build. It's the MVP, but they've focused on making sure those customers are, are coming back, are sticking with them, even if it's the first 30, first 50. And um, then you build a strength. Um, so that when we can, when, when we think, okay, what does this look like bigger? If they can maintain that level of engagement, then they've got a super strong business. It's not necessarily about having thousands of thousands of, of customers off the bat. And um, the, the other side of that is focusing on what part of the product you want to build. We all want to build hugely exciting products that are incredibly smart and um, that could do a lot of things for a lot of people. And um, I think in the early stages, keep those costs low and, and focus on building that the, the core thing that is it is the most magical part for early early customers. And it's fine to have a product roadmap that suggests everything else you want to build. To begin with, if you can get that first level of engagement um, from, from a small group of customers and they love it, that's much, that's a much easier conversation to have. Um, so that's what we'd look out for. When you say a small group of, of customers, um, how small is, is too small? Yeah, good point. Um, so with maybe more B2B, you can have a smaller set of customers because they're probably going to pay you more. So if you're selling to corporates, the first three clients, you know, three pilots, that's a, that's, that's, that's a, that's a good approach. If you are a dating app, that's, that's obviously not going to be enough, especially if they're not paying you yet. Um, if you've ultimately launched in a product that has free users, um, We'd expect it at least to be in the in the hundreds, hopefully, sort of a thousand and above. Um, if they're paying you, then the and depending on if it's sort of B two C, um, let's say app subscription, a few a few a few pound a month, then uh, over a hundred would be good. Um, just to get the conversation going, you can try it. But and by the way, it's completely fine to raise before then. It'd just be a bit harder. Um, and you. Angels would want to come in with a lower valuation. Um, the model of growth, if you have free users, you need to prove that you can get those users quickly, cheaply, and they stick around long enough for you to eventually monetize them. Um, I think in the current startup and investment climate, what we're seeing is there's, there's less businesses that are getting relying on just free users. And actually, if you could build a proposition that convinces people to spend money straight away, that's it, it, it's much more attractive from an investment perspective because we know that you're not trying to prove that later on you're proving it now even if it's the first few 